Shalom, shalom, and more grace to you. We bless God for another opportunity to just bring God's word to you through this devotional. My name is Boniface Nagimwangi, and it just gives me great joy to bring the word of truth and to break it down into bite-sized pieces so that we can be able to grow in our walk with the living God. Uh, you remember I had promised that we had done part one of Anchored on Truth. The topic of this devotional was Anchored on Truth. And by reason of its size or its length, if you like, we were able to do the first part, part A. And now this marks the part B of that devotional. Why don't we pray together, even as I begin to unpack the word of God to you uh, through this medium. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you for giving me the opportunity to teach the word of God, the word of truth. May there be truth inside of our hearts, inside of our spirit man, that this truth would begin to grow as a fruit and begin to give life even unto them that already will be bearing this fruit and even share the same with those who haven't begun to bear fruit in their Christian walk and faith and by extension thereby also begin to disciple them on the word of truth. Take all the glory and take all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving and everyone says amen. Wonderful. So last time, towards the tail end of the devotional, I spoke to us about two types of ears with which a believer can be able to hear the word of God through or the word of God with. And the two types of ears was one is a closed ear, which is one we're supposed to be wary of. The book of Mark chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. And the second one is an open ear. John chapter 6, verse 63 to 67. And I said briefly that that verse in John chapter 6 speaks about us being quickened by the Holy Spirit. So when you open up your spirit man hearing or spirit man ears, then you're able to trap and perceive and hear sort of the undertones of what the Spirit of God wants you to connect with, and thereby you're able to grow, you're able to give yourself to knowledge, give yourself to understanding, and thereby grow in wisdom, grow in the truth of the word of the living God. Now, thirdly, I did one and two now, today thirdly, and probably fourthly into fifthly, give the word your eyes. While ears relate to understanding, eyes relate to perception. God gave us two eyes with which we can be able to focus on the word of truth. As a matter of fact, the book of Joshua, chapter number 1, verse number 8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to observe. We observe by reason of our eyes. Actually, that word, observe, the root word of that word, is like the way a lab technician observes a specimen using the eye or the lens on a microscope. That's how we're supposed to read the word of God every morning. When we open the scriptures, the pages of life, that you give the word of God a keen eye. Now, eyes relate to perception. And this is how, brothers and sisters, faith comes about. Our physical eyes and ears are not enough. Without understanding and perceiving, we need also the power of the Holy Spirit who reveals all truth that we can then anchor our lives on that truth. And that's what we call revelation knowledge. You do well to be able to give your ears and give your eyes close and keen attention to the Spirit of God as you read, so that he may be able to begin within that process to quicken you, to alert you, to help you catch things that you're not meant to miss. Now, there are two types of eyes. Part one is, or number one is, a good eye. These are eyes that have been opened and enlightened by the Holy Spirit to see what God is saying. Eyes that see. Not every eye sees in the physical and also in the spiritual. You need to know that. You need to distinguish that fact for yourself. To have a good eye. To train your eye to be able to ask the Holy Spirit to help you zero in or zoom in to what you may be missing in a particular text. This requires humility and submission and 
the attitude of having a teachable spirit. That's what it requires. An eye that can submit to the spirit of God to know and say, hey, I don't know everything. I'm not able to do, I'm not an expert. I'm not astute in all things. There are some things that I need the help of the Holy Spirit. Who is the great teacher to teach me and help me perceive and understand as I should? The second kind of an eye is an evil eye. Proverbs 28, 22. The Bible says, he that hastens to be rich has an evil, an eye, and considers not that poverty shall come upon him. This means if we perceive things in an evil way, with a carnal mind, then the word of God will be meaningless to us. We must understand what is the posture of our hearts. When you talk about jealousy, there's someone looking at you with a jealous eye or someone looking at you with an envious eye or a covetous eye. It simply means that they are carnal and that they have not matured and that they have not repented and disconnected themselves from that vice from the misdeeds of the flesh and thereby begin then to take up or put on the spirit of God that they can be able to discern and distinguish between good and evil and thereby do the right thing which is a good thing. James chapter 1 verse 25 the Bible says but whosoever looks carefully into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein will not be a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in all he does. If we want to be blessed, the Bible says, in everything that then we in everything that we do, I beg your pardon, we must consistently do two things. One is to look at the scripture, two is to obey it. You do what you have seen, which is the word of truth. Fourthly, give the word your time. We have hours, we have minutes, we have seconds on what you call a wristwatch or on a clock that hangs on a wall or the clock that is on your mobile phone. But you require to sacrifice some time, some quiet time, quality time to be in the word of truth, to actually take that Bible, open it and begin to read it. Give it attention, give it time, give it priority. Joshua 1 the Bible says, but you shall meditate in the word of God day and night. This shows us a season, a cycle. Give it your attention in the daytime, in the morning. Also give it your attention in the nighttime. Give it time. Some of us are nocturnal by nature or by preference or by personality or demeanor. Others of us are early birds. So when it is that it is your time, wake up at that time or Retreat in that evening time. Reflect during that evening time. Be in the place of prayer, but give the word of God. Do not allow a day to pass that you have not read the word of God. Somebody said that we eat three times or three meals in a day. Thereby, we should also eat equally the word of God and chew the card, spiritual meat of the word of God, three times every day. But if you cannot do it three times every day, at least do it once, but most preferably do it twice. The answer to these questions and more is that it takes commitment of setting aside our time daily to read, study, meditate, hear, and memorize the word of God. This should be your most quiet and undisturbed time. Let me pause this devotion and ask you, do you have a place of exclusivity with God? A place of communion with God? A place of Intimate time, time, your best time that you are giving to him. Remember, God is either Lord of all that you own and that you are, or not Lord at all. Therefore, we must surrender, we must sacrifice and give ourselves to this. For more on the same, read Psalm 119 verse 15, verse 18, and verse 32. Psalm 119 verse 15, verse 18, and verse 32. Fifthly, give the word your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 21 to 23. Invest your heart and soul into the word of truth. It is the word that you allow to enter into your spirit that resides, it stays there in the central part of our lives. 
whereby we can be able to see transformation and growth. Give the word your heart. Open your heart to the pages of life. So we must ensure that the anchor we have anchored ourselves on is of truth and that we repeatedly revisit by giving the word of God our ears, our eyes, our time, and even our hearts. Lastly and finally, give the word your mouth. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. It talks about ruminating. Like the way a ruminant, a cow chews curd. It processes the word of God. Consider the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Memorize scripture. Speak the word of God. Speak it in prayer. Take the word of God. Proclaim. Read the word of truth. Like the book of Ezra. Ezra was a scribe. It says that he sp spoke when it was noon time, when it was noon day, and he read the word of God before the assembly of the people. Give the word your mouth. For our words to become life and become seasoned with grace, we must process them just as a cow chews and several times as a ruminant before it can swallow its food. Secondly, give God's word in your mouth a chance by speaking out that word. Nothing moves in your life until you speak to it. That means you can't just speak some ordinary words as it were. You must speak spirit because that's what the word of God is. It is spirit and it is life. Speak those mountain situations in your life. Disturbing situations in your life. Prescribe and speak to them the word of truth and the word of power. So that concludes for us this devotion. Part 2 of this devotion. If you like, you can just scroll and look into the first devotion I did on this topic, Anchored on Truth. And you'll see the part 1 and now the part 2. Therefore, or thereby, it is complete. And I pray that God blesses you. God speaks to you. God helps you to be able to develop a culture of being a man and or a woman who is in the word. Someone said in a quote, it's anonymous and I quote them, we need to have men and women of substance, not men and women full of substances. We need the substance of the word, the substance of the weight of the word inside of our hearts, inside of our mouths, inside of us, that we'll be able to showcase it, be able to apply it, and thereby find victory for daily life to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for having tuned in and listened. Please press the like button at the bottom of this uh, recording and be able to share as well with your friends and relatives and friends and you know and, and your buddies and they can also be blessed with this devotional stay tuned for much more of god's word as god re releases and supplies the grace we shall continue to edify exhort and encourage you in the word of truth god bless you and take care peace <laughs>